again, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome into another edition of the Adam Jones podcast brought to you by the Baltimore Banner and the BaltimoreBanner.com. I'm, of course, Jerry Coleman. He, of course, is the five time MLB All Star, the former Oriole, the former Mariner. The guys played for the Diamondbacks and in Japan. His name is Adam Jones. Today, in episode number six, we will be joined by the skipper of the Baltimore Orioles. He is the manager of the year runner up. It's Brandon Hyde coming up shortly. Also, Ed, Adam and I are going to debate the pros and cons of mobile wagering, which is coming to Maryland, finally getting off the ground. We'll also discuss our meanings, our interpretations of Thanksgiving (laughs) for everyone out there. Adam celebrating in a different country. Adam will deliver his weekly rant, speaking of different countries, and the World Cup banning alcohol has got them all fired up. We'll salute our Baltimore banner, Varsity Sports Network, Athlete of the Week. It's a mouthful, but well-deserved. And as well, you can respond to one of our comments via social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Adam Jones Pod. And we have a new email out. If you email us, you're eligible for a prize that's a signed piece of memorabilia from one Adam Jones. That's at adamjonespod at gmail.com. At adamjonespod at gmail.com, as always, we're brought to you by our friends at Jack Daniels. There's lots of ways to make whiskey. There's only one way to make Jack Daniels. Make it count. Drink responsibly with Jack Daniels. Also, by Be More Around Town, they have the ultimate all-inclusive purple pregame tailgate experience. That's before every home and away game. Still some spots remaining for those trips to Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and the end of the season in Cincinnati. Head to BeMoreRoundTown.com and find out more. Also, by the good folks over at the Wyman Group. By G Leaf Medical Cannabis Company as well. Visit gleaf.com, medical cannabis for qualified Maryland patients only until we get to next year. And a reminder if you guys are enjoying this podcast as well as you should be, check out the Baltimore banner. They have the entire Baltimore region covered, including the Orioles, the Terps, and of course the Ravens. And as a special thanks to our podcast viewers and listeners, you can get six months of the Baltimore banner, digital access, unlimited. For just a buck. Again, head to BaltimoreBanner.com slash AJ. That's BaltimoreBanner.com slash AJ. Six months unlimited digital access for just a buck. So here comes Brandon Hyde, and he just got thrown out of the game. He said, don't come out. Brandon j- didn't say anything. He took a couple steps, and he threw him out of the game. Now, this is crazy. Couldn't you question information? You know, Yeah, he just wants yeah. an explanation. I, I don't even think he was arguing. Let's bring in the manager of the Baltimore Orioles. He is Brandon Hyde. We bring him in with a bang there. Skip, how you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to you. You just got my blood going again. With Ron Culpa right there on that. <laughs> <laughs> Culpa gets the ass, man. He gets the ass. That's the thing, There's though, a history that, between you two. No, me and Culpa are good, actually. He, he's... Uh, kind of apologize a little bit after the fact <laughs> because he threw me out for something that I was just I wasn't going to argue the replay I was going out to, to to check on runners or something and he just tossed me right away thinking I was coming out to argue and then when I told him what I was doing he, he kind of said like my bad but it's too late uh, so well we appreciate you coming on Adam go right ahead I didn't even know you and Adam knew each other so well so it's great that you two are able to catch up here on his own podcast this baseball family is crazy it's it's crazy but uh, Hyder, first off, congratulations on a fantastic year. Uh, second place in the manager of the year. Um, obviously, I thought you know, it was a little biased. I thought you should have won it. Um, but Tito is obviously great, too. But I just wanted to jump in here you know, and just talk about the last four years because you you got thrown into a fire. So let's just be, call it what it is. And look at what it is now. It is beautiful. It is something to aspire. It's something to you know, watch. We're all watching you know, the growth. Uh, just take us down, you know, the last four years, really. Well, like you said, I mean, there was um, that, that first year was kind of a blur, honestly. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, me and Mike got this job really late. And so I, I think it was around the end of, end of December. Um, so imagine right now not even having a manager or GM going into the off season. You're uh, just how late you are, free agent wise, et cetera. And, um, you know, Mike kind of was really honest with me in the interview process of, of what this was going to was going to happen, which was pretty much that we were going to redo everything and start some start some departments that weren't developed at that point with from the analytics side and international. Um, 
and kind of start over from that end. And, and it was just going to take a little while. Uh, so the first few years were obviously, obviously rough, uh, but I, I got some I great coaches around me, uh, formed some great relationships with players. That's what it means the most to me, honestly, is, is uh, how, you know, players feel about me and, and the coaching staff and the environment we create. Cause if we, then we get good players and we create, have this good environment, all of a sudden you're going to start winning ball games, as you know. And, and so, um, I feel like we've done the, we did the best we could those few years, honestly, with some weird year, you know, weird stuff happening in those three years too, with COVID and, uh, man, losing Mancini. And, and, um, there was just a lot of things that happened, honestly, that was, uh, something stuff that we had never dealt with before. And, and, uh, uh, you know, all of a sudden this year we got more talented and, and uh, so Mike's drafted well and, and uh, we've done a nice job on the waiver wire. Um, that's been a huge thing for us is, is the pretty much our whole bullpen, which was the backbone of our team last year was almost all waiver wire guys and guys to get opportunity. So uh, we've done a nice job of acquiring and we're looking forward to, to continuing uh, to get, continue to get more talented. We're probably going to be even younger next year, possibly. Um, but I think we're going to be a fun team to watch and, and uh, hope we make a run at it. You hit it right on the head. You said talent. And I'll, I've gotten to see some of these guys up close. I, I mean, I, we had Gunner on last week, and I remember when I first met him, I grabbed his shoulders like, damn, where'd you get, where'd you come from? Like, this Captain America body already, like in a laboratory. And it's just like, you tell you, you know, the talent. Explain that. Like, because, you know, we hear about what the major league guys are going on, but you guys got some guys in the in the process, in the, in the pipeline with Kerstad, I think I'm saying it correctly, yep, yep. just led the uh, American, or just the, the AFL in uh, yep. and, and hitting. Yep. Like, talk on, speak on that talent you got, because it's not all, it's not all there yet. No, no, Grayson's no. Grayson's not no. there yet. No, Grayson's not here. You know, we just saw a snippet of DL last year um, at the end of the year. So, yeah, uh, I mean, co- guys like Colton Kowser, uh, fast moving college performer, I had him play in a lot of our big league spring training games last year, just because I like watching him play. I knew he wasn't going to be on the club or be with us for the summer, but um, I, I wanted to see him play. It's it's what I've noticed is um, the big difference in the four years is the size, the size, the physicality of our guys. Um, my first year here, I felt like there was a, you know, we weren't very guys that would come over from minor league camp, not very physical, but now, you know, you look around our weight room or you look at, uh, the guy, the young guys coming up, I mean, Rushman's big and super and super yeah. strong. Kowser is six, four and super strong. Uh, Kierstadt is big with big legs, huge power. Um, Gunnar Henderson is like still growing. He's uh, from what he yeah. was two years ago to what he is now. When I saw him in spring training last year, I was like, Oh my God, this guy is a house. And then on top of that, they're all able to run too. Um, so just the athleticism as well as the size, which, as you know, plays in the big leagues. You got to be str- you got to be strong. You got to be fast. You got to be one or the other. And if you're both, then you got a chance to be really good. So, um, you know, the teams in our division, these, these aren't small dudes. These, these aren't weak players. They're, 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 they're strong, athletic. And and uh, so that's been fun to watch our guys draft and develop guys that, that are, are physical um, and have big time tools. Awesome. All right, now the future. Um, obviously, we know all of the you know the hoopla and the headlines going on with with the, the family, you know, the ownership and stuff. But you and Elias, I know you guys have talked a lot. What what's you know what what are you looking for? What is, what's your need in terms of what are you going out there in free agency and saying, look, at, we need this, we can spin this, we can't spin this. But you know, I've, I've been there before, knowing yeah. that you know it's a budget, it's a budget that you have to stay within and. Uh, so now, I, without naming guys, what's what's some needs that you're looking for right away? Well, I think, you know, there's uh, – and I've said this a bunch, but a huge difference for us this last year was we had, we had three or four guys in the room that were older players that really held our young guys accountable um, and changed the culture a little bit. Um, from the guys that had been with me for the last three, four years, even some guys that played with you and you at the end of the year, your career there, um, and never really won before. Hadn't seen what winning was like. Um, and we got brought some older guys in that didn't want to lose. <laughs> and, and so you talk about Chirinos and, and Ruggie and, and Jordan Lyles. Um, and there, there was this feel of like, when we lose, it's not, it's not acceptable. Um, we're better. We're, 
And that you saw that a lot that first month of the season, honestly. And you heard it in the in our hitters meetings and and kind of the way just Jordan, honestly, Jordan never wanted to come out of a game um, in a great way. I mean, that's, that's what you want as a manager. A guy never want to come out of a game, but there'd be a, a you know, not a fight, but it would be a, a conversation with me sometimes. Um, and I, young guys saw that. That's great. That, that's, that's, that's being a winning player, not wanting to come out, wanting to, to stay on the mound, wanting to help out the bullpen, et cetera. Those type of things happen this year. Um, I, I feel like we need to continue that honestly. And I think that you're, you're, having the blend of younger players as well as the third, fourth, fifth year guys we're going to have Hayes, Mullen, Santander, those type of guys, Mal Castle now. Um, but then getting a couple crusty veteran guys uh, is, is really, really important and undervalued, honestly, in this game from, from a chemistry standpoint, a clubhouse standpoint, just to learning the game as a younger player. When Robinson Trinos talked, honestly, it means a lot more than when to a player it means a lot more than what I said. So to a player. Um, it was, it was his peer. It was his locker. I mean, it was somebody next to him. It was somebody that, that, uh, you know, doesn't have my chair. And, and, um, so those type of conversations are important. Skip, how involved have you been during the off season with Mike in terms of maybe talking to potential free agents or going over that process with him? And you guys have an understanding, like Adam said, of what the budget is because people saw what happened with Jordan Lyles and wonder if he's going to be a part of the picture going forward after you guys decline his salary. Yeah, no, the, I am involved in the, um, in the free agent process from the standpoint of, of, you know, our, our pro scouting group in our front office identifies players that they think are fits. And then Mike will, will send me a text or call me, Hey, what do you, what do you think about this guy? Um, and then I'll be involved in the conversations with potential free agents. Also, that's just starting now. So my involvement will be, um, you know, giving my opinions a little bit to Mike on, on, on certain guys. If I have history, if not, I, I put a lot of trust into our front office and finding guys like Jordan Lyles. What a great find last year and exceeded expectations and was worth everything, um, just what, what he did. So I'm putting a lot of trust in those guys. And the, I mean, I'm not involved in the budget or how much we're going to spend or who what we're going to get somebody for. Um, but Mike will a lot of times ask me, is this guy a good fit in our clubhouse? Have you heard good things about him? Um, you saw him in Chicago. What, what, what do you got? Um, so those, those type of conversations. And then from a personal level, I'll get involved with, um, with the player a little bit and, and, uh, you know, have a discussion and talk and answer any questions they may have, uh, about me, you know, about our club and about us going forward. And what about with the coaching staff that's now stabilized? I know you added Cody Ashey. As an offensive strategist, uh, can you explain what that position really is? You know, it's. Uh, I feel like in the last five years, we've, we've developed a lot of the, the, the industry has developed a lot of uh, coaching titles. Different. Um, it's just expanding the coaching staff. Honestly, as Adam knows, it, there's so much information now, and there's and there's so much work to be done. Uh, you know, the, I remember when I broke in the league in 2010, one hitting coach, one advanced guy. We had an advanced binder that the, the guy was on the, saw the team the series before. The hitting coach did all the work and in the cage for eight hours, uh, never slept. I mean, that was that was those days are now over. <laughs> um, you know, when I was a bench coach in 14 with Chicago, I did and in 10 and 11, I did all the pre-series stuff. I went through every hit and run, every stolen base attempt, every whatever from a game management standpoint to help out the manager, those numbers, you know, the way to get information now is so much different. Um, now there's just more coaching involved and, and, you know, players have more needs also. I think right now, I think that the, the cage is extremely, extremely important. And uh, we're excited about Cody. Cody's, uh, uh, you know, brings us somebody that was fresh off the field, had a little bit different, um, you know, had, had a, it was a prospect and Philly didn't, you know, had a tough time, kind of bounced around organizations and has been doing an amazing job, did an amazing job last year with our upper level minor league guys. Um, got to spend a little bit of time with him. He's got a great feel for players. Um, he's been in the box. He understands. So I'm excited to add him to the coaching staff, but everybody else pretty much stays, stays pat. Yeah, he was, he's a good ad. I remember uh, playing against him when he was with the Nationals, I, I believe, mm -hmm. that, towards the yeah. end. And just a just a hard nosed player, and you can just tell, like you know, you see certain guys, you're like, ah, that guy's gonna be on the other side soon, and helping out guys that advance this game. Um, before we let you go, I wanted to like a double, you know, two two part question. Yep. 
with Thanksgiving coming up, um, mm-hmm. first of all, what are you thankful for? And what's your favorite dish? Okay, I'll start with the dish first. Stuffing. Uh, I like the 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 sausage in the stuffing. Um, okay. My grandparents used to, my grandfather used to make this amazing. We always had, we always had Thanksgiving and we were, you would be appreciative of this, Adam, in, in Redondo Beach, California. We'd go down to Redondo. Oh, yeah. And um, my grandfather would make Thanksgiving dinner all the time, and it was amazing. But he just put so much stock sausage in the stuffing. Every stuff, every, all the stuffing now doesn't quite taste the same to me. Uh, but I like the whole thing. I mean, I'm I'm the turkey gravy uh, stuffing, uh, sweet potatoes. I I, I like cranberry the, sauce. What's that? Cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce. The whole thing. I like to have all multiple times and then um, feel terrible on the couch watching football the rest of the day. I think that that's, that's kind of been yes. my routine. Honestly, <laughs> you play catch early and then get early in the day. You try to get some sort of two on two, three on three football going, which we're going to try to do on Thursday. And then you, you eat way too much. And then you sit and watch, watch the Cowboys or, or Vikings, whoever lions usually on, 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 uh, on, on, on that, on that day. So, Excited about that. I'm just thankful, honestly, to be able to spend that time with, with, uh, you know, with my family who I, who I see so sporadically for the eight months that I'm kind of in and out. So um, my oldest daughter's here from Syracuse. I have a 12 year old and a 14 year old. We're all going to be together. And uh, that's what I'm thankful for. Well, that's awesome. And we can see by your background, you're you're in Baltimore, obviously. How about the Ravens? Because I've spoken with coach Harbaugh. He talked about the bond that you two have developed. Talk about that relationship. A lot of people aren't aware that you two are kind of close. I'm actually in Sarasota. This is my spring training office. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Jerry was never allowed in I was there, just the there, but I was never allowed in there. <laughs> yeah. Adam's probably – Adam sure has been here a bunch. Yeah. Um, it looks, it looks kind of similar to the one in Camden Yards. You know what? It does. It does. You know, one thing that, that uh, I've been lucky is that I have, I have a great spring training office, and I have a – and this is, I think – this is uh, I'm thankful to, for Showalter, Buck Showalter, for this. Great stuff and and great office in Baltimore, and a great office here in in Sarasota. So I I, I get spoiled a little bit um, because of the space that I that I get to work in work at. Um, yeah, no, John has been uh, it's been really fun. I got to see him a few weeks ago when they played uh, when they played Tampa here on that Thursday night. Just saw him briefly to go on the field a little bit. Um, and that was a blast being able to see him. He, he, he follows us. Uh, he texts me a lot after games. Um, that's, that's so cool that for me that, uh, I'm, a, I'm just a sports fan, honestly. So I love football. Uh, I love basketball. Uh, I'm now, you know, the last few years now been a Ravens fan because of, uh, John just is such a class human being and such a likable person. Uh, I love his coaching style. I love the way he goes about things. I will try to watch as many press conferences as he, as I, as he can, as I can, because he's so good. Um, he's just so relaxed and such a, and such a pro. Uh, so I'm learning a lot from him, but I'm also just enjoying our relationship and, and uh, looking forward to going out to hopefully maybe see one more Ravens game here before, before the season's over. All right. Last thing for you about 2023, there's a number of rule changes coming up. Also the alignment in terms of scheduling, Uh, you got to be happy about that where you're not going to see the AL East, what, 18 or 19 times a season. Uh, You're going to be able to travel a little bit more and see some different cities. I mean, what is there not to like, I guess? No doubt. I'm I'm looking forward to playing everybody. I think that that's – I'm a traditionalist in a lot of ways, but I'm I'm actually looking forward to the rule changes. Uh, I'm I'm interested in seeing what it's going to look like. I think that we – you know, with the bigger bases, I like our athleticism. I think we got we got team speed. We had the you know Mateo and Mullins were one two in stolen bases last year in the American League. I think it only helps us. Gunner can really run. We got we're we're, we're pretty young and athletic, so I think bigger bases helps us. Um, we're, and we're pretty le- getting really left handed, so we're pretty left handed now. So taking away the shift, I think that that's that's going to ho- hopefully benefit us a- as well. So. Um, with the new rule changes, I'm for it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I'm also looking forward to not playing, you know, Toronto 19 times, but being able to play other people as well and, and uh, travel a little bit more. But it's the big leagues. It's tough to complain. Hey, we'll let you go get back to work. Or I mean, you look like you did your elliptical workout. So 
I, you know what I did, I did a little, uh, little, little treadmill, little elliptical, um, uh, plan for the tie before Thanksgiving. You got to plan ahead. Absolutely. For that. Have a <laughs> wonderful holiday and the best to you and your family. Really grateful for you to be That's on smart with us. Move and- right there. I'm going to do the same. I'm in Istanbul. So, uh, I was trying to find something. <laughs> turkey they, in Turkey, as we call it. Wow. Wow. Good for you. See other places. That's unbelievable. When you have a career like that, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. It's great. They don't eat that over here. They don't. <laughs> exactly. They don't. Thanksgiving over here is a normal day. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the podcast. Yeah. Go enjoy your family time and the holiday, Skip, and hopefully we can get you back on at some point. Very grateful for your time here today. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. All right. Thank you. Brandon Hyde joining us here on the Adam Jones podcast. That was really cool to kept up, catch up with the skip. So we want to thank Brandon Hyde. Great to have him on the show. And best of luck to the birds moving forward. <laughs>now time to turn it up a notch as we get set to argue sports betting with ads practically running on a loop on tv is now legal in 30 states and upwards of 90 percent of it is happening online and on phones with apps from companies like DraftKings. let's bring in the judge his honor reggie fugit here to arbitrate decide determine judge this segment known as Jerry versus Jones. Reggie, the floor. Thank is you. Here. Thank you, Jerry. Welcome back again to the Jerry versus Jones debate. I am Reginald Fugit, your judge presiding. We have a very good topic to discuss. If all of you are aware, Maryland has already uh, legalized sports betting, but more recently this week, uh, the mobile apps will be uh, the, the floodgates will be opening. So we're going to be debating uh, mobile wagering and gambling as a whole. So I, I definitely want to look into this a little bit. And I think you two will have great uh, sides on this because I have an issue with it in the sense that will the integrity of sports be at question in the long run from college all the way up? Where does it stop? Is it going to be uh, high school sports that they're going to be get gambling on? Our father's going to be like, hey, son, miss this field goal. I don't know. Anyway, Adam, you're on the side that the sports and integrity um, is not at question because you're an athlete. And Jerry, you and I are on the sideline. What do you? Th- so anyway, long story short is when you guys get going, uh, Adam's up three two. Um, this is the sixth episode. Jerry can uh, even the score. Jerry won last week. You get the first word, Jerry. All right, here we go. Listen, sports gambling has been approved since the end of 2021, like slots, like marijuana, like a lot of things in the state of Maryland. They've been belated in getting this approved. Now that it's approved, I think it is a game changer, the ability to not only wager from your own phone, but your own home, wherever you are in the state of Maryland, presumably your couch. I'm all for this while acknowledging it's far from perfect. First of all, again, waited far too long, blew millions out the door because of it. Look at the money that New York and New Jersey have been bringing in for many months, earning millions, if not billions. Now, with the price of gas, though, and some of these undesirable locations for where these places are, this is great for Marylanders. You don't have to get in your car and travel downtown or travel across the state line and give the state of Pennsylvania your hard-earned dollars. You get to stay at home, keep the money at home. There is a danger side to it, though. I will acknowledge that as well, the fact that you can get a little crazy on your couch, and if you're drinking as well, that's a bad combination. I also worry about the impact it may have on the athletes themselves. If you're betting at a live game and a guy strikes out where you had him getting a hit or a walk, that can't be too comfortable either. But what is comfortable is the ability to do it from your own home. So I'm I'm all for that. I'm just worried about some of the ramifications for it. But I am pro mobile gambling. I don't think it's going to ruin the experience for athletes unless people get out of hand. But that's why they have ballpark security. All right, Adam. Jerry is the uh, pro mobile gambling guy. We'll, we'll jump into the integrity part later. Okay. So, yeah, tell us what you All got. Right. Okay. Well, okay, I'm not against gambling at all. Um, I mean, I've been to the casinos before. I'm not a big gambler in my own personal, but I don't mind gambling one bit. My biggest thing is there's just like how this whole fantasy football and fantasy sports has just came in, and now you're going to be live gambling, live betting at the games, in the ballparks, 
you know, what if you're on deck and someone's telling you, hey, man, I need, you know, <clears throat> the wager, the odds for me, for you to hit a home run is this. If I'm a bit, you think you hit one, I'm gonna put $100 on you. If you do, I win $300. If someone's telling you that behind you. I think that part right there will mess up the game. I think that um, how fans, you know, I've been told, oh, I wish you got a still stolen base. Or I wish you scored another run. Or I got a hit for my fantasy team. Because people are really trying to make a lot of money off this stuff. And when you mess with people's money, you, people get pretty mad. So I think that if they were to able, you can do it wherever you want to. Home is, I think it's a bad thing. Because as you see during the pandemic, everybody sat on their damn thing and made Bezos richer than all hell. Me too. But if you, at the games, I think it should be stopped. It shouldn't be allowed just because I don't want to do something about integrity. We're going to get in touch on that. I don't think, I don't think it should be allowed in the games just because of that integrity factor and, you know, having people scream uh, maybe obscenity is just because someone lost 20 bucks because the integrity the is not going to be a problem. Happen. Integrity is not going to be a problem. And let me explain to you why, and I'll do it slowly so you can understand what I'm saying here. And I'm being facetious <laughs> is the fact that the casinos, the sports books, the folks in Vegas, High they have education. way more on the line to lose than the athletes. OK, this thing is very regulated. There's going to be no shenanigans. There's going to be no funny business mm -hmm. involved. We're not going to see a Pete Rose situation. We're not going to see a Tim Donaghy type situation. Why? Because the casinos, the wise guys are I'm watching very that. closely I'm and that will come off the board if there's any foolishness. Right. So I'm saying anyone worried about the integrity of the game okay, or things being bent the but wrong way or people, you know, skimming points or whatever, that's not going to occur. The harassment that you talked about, that's real. That could happen. When you mix that in with alcohol, it's a dangerous combination at a stadium. So I'll be curious about that because it's going to be more immediate. But the integrity, I don't think, will be touched. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Adam, you get I the think last that word. You, you hit on it. You're right about the terms of the game. No, no, the game's not going to get Jerry. Yeah, the game's not going to be bothered. I don't think that, you know, ball strikes, you know, that is going to be bothered <clears throat> or play, you know, plays by the ref. I'm just speaking on the fact of when you, as a, when you're a fan, again, players are supposed to have tunnel vision, not supposed to, you're supposed to block out everything that's supposed to be heard. That's fine and dandy, but as human beings, you still hear it. What if that, what if that bothers the player? What if that player, you know, it's like, oh man, I need this run. It's like over and some dudes like over and under eight runs and, you know, for the game and it's uh, eight and a half and it's four, four or three, five, three. And, you know, man on third one out, you don't think that person's like, Hey, oof, I'm gonna put this bed in right kick. Cause this, this is, a, this is an easy one right there. Scream, hey, get the damn runner in swinging all out his ass at stupid pitches. I've done it before, but um, you know, <laughs> And I've heard the people <laughs> screaming my name back at when I'm going back to the dugout because I was unsuccessful in this attempt. Now you put real money into it, not just, you know, the, the ticket entrance money. You're putting real money behind it. That's It's going to get tricky. I, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm just against the end of ballpark just because fans are asses these days. And now when you put real money on the line, ooh. Well, just remember right. this money's all going to a good cause to help the schools and the children, allegedly. <laughs> All right, guys, that was a great debate. Um, I will uh, preside. I do have a verdict. Um, so I think Jerry's argument has given too many assumptions. Can I freeze? Jerry, um, Adam's going to win this one. What? Uh, you have, it's just too many assumptions when you're in. I think time will tell. Um, you know what happens when you assume. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think uh, Adam won this one. He's bringing up really real-time examples of, of situational stuff where you're just assuming that the, you know, that in the future, uh, these sorts of things aren't at question, but anyway, long story short, we will see great debate guys. Yeah. I just feel like it's Thanksgiving week and that family bond got a little too tight there, but <laughs> all right, I'll take the L even though I thought I won. And of course <laughs> our debate as always is brought to you by Christmas is Christmas is coming soon. So he knows. <laughs> Or Hanukkah. Christmas or is Hanukkah. coming soon, so he knows. So he and knows. I do want to mention our friends <laughs> at the Wyman nice Group. Gift. Thank you to Dennis and Mandy Wyman for all their support. And I'm sure you have some nice things to say. Or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, well. whatever religion you believe in. Hey. We've talked a lot about the Orioles and betting and all that. Let's get into the Ravens, speaking of betting. Uh, they were big favorites against... Carolina, they didn't cover the spread, but they did win the no, football no, you're game. Mad about I think that's that. what Coach Harbaugh cares about the most, Adam, as you know. <laughs> They've now won four straight. It's been far from, as Buck Showalter used to say, aesthetically pleasing. 
but a win's a win. And the offense still hasn't gotten cranked up <clears> the way I think a lot of us would like to see it be cranked up. They don't have all their weapons, though. We know Rashad Bateman's loss for the season. J.K. Dobbins still on the men. Lamar's had his up and downs. Uh, still having issues uh, staying healthy sometimes during the week. I wonder what this guy's eating on a regular basis, or maybe he got a little <laughs> bit of that Baltimore weather chill. Yeah, no, he's a Florida boy, so you know that, you know, as soon as it get cold, like 60 degrees to the Florida boys, they got to throw in a parka and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but now, nah, man, the Ravens, the Ravens played, like you said, like we have with their game. We always got to, I got to reiterate what Tory said, is it always goes back to um, – that, that, that's what you expect. Again, the spread's 13. That's a huge spread for the Ravens. I don't know the last time they won a game by like that. They, they had a spread and then completed the spread of that magnitude. But like Lamar said at the end of the game, they rolled the defense. They couldn't get going on offense the entire game. Me and Rob Long was texting about it. They couldn't get going. Ooh. But me and Rob Long. Oh, okay. About oh, the that thing. I'm like, because people, people were so mad about like, oh, this boring game. That's how football is, man. The other team makes some money too. But they played a complete game how they're supposed to. They pounded the ball. They kept doing it 30 and 115. That means they ran the ball. I know you're happy about them putting the ball on the ground. And the defense showed up. I know Baker Mayfield's not elite, but at the end of the day, he is an NFL quarterback, and he can throw the ball. They shut him down. They shut down the running game. So the defense did what they had to do for all four quarters. Then the offense played the fourth quarter terrifically. And, you know, it wasn't pretty. Again, it's not aesthetically pleasing, but – I know every single fan walked out that stadium happy. Now, again, stop tweeting during the damn games. <laughs> well, the great thing is, <laughs> is they're seven and three right now. They were seven and three a year ago at this point, heading into December. Mm -hmm. But then Lamar got hurt and all heck broke loose and they didn't win another game. But we keep talking about this schedule. They had the lowly Jacksonville. Then Denver comes to Baltimore. So, right. again, the schedule is very favorable. They keep they, sure. they need to keep filing these victories right now. I don't think they're going to be an underdog in a game until maybe the last game against Cincinnati. But let's talk about the defense. And the addition of Roquan Smith has really helped out Patrick Queen and, and making plays and getting to the attack, uh, you know, making the tackle and being a much more effective defender. That was a heck of a pickup by Eric DaCosta. I mean, him, I mean, Smith and you getting Pierre Paul. And, you know, I, I liked how – uh, Harbaugh gave some love to Pierre Paul at the end of the game, but Queen now great just gets the wrong. Yeah, yeah, great catch it, for a I mean, guy, that, just for a guy that's only dealing with eight or nine digits. He's not dealing with. He's not dealing with all of them. He's not. He's not dealing with them. But but Queen now just gets to be a free roamer. You know what I mean? And he's that hybrid. He's a what is he? A linebacker, strong safety? Who really knows? But he gets to just roam and doesn't have to worry about so many different other things. And and you see, he's all oh, the ball's over there. He's over there. And he's not. I mean, he's not Ed Reed, but. He's damn near where the ball is at on every play. And, you know, DaCosta knows what he's doing when he picks up guys. And, um, you know, when, when you got guys who need to be double teamed, it frees up a guy. And now you see that that defense is playing really high. But I wanted to talk about next week because Jacksonville, I think, out of this whole schedule is the most important because it is a tough – it's not a tough place to win because obviously they're not that good of a football team. But it's an easy place to go get lax at. It's an easy place to just go be like, all right, this is the team we're supposed to beat. And then you lose 20, 20 to 15 or 20 to 14, and you're like, damn. And then you look back at the end of this, the league, and you're missing a game by something. And, you know, we always look back as players. But this week I think is really, really important. So uh, Denver coming to MNT, that's going to be – I don't say it's a, it's a hard, hard game, but you're at home. But going to Jacksonville, I think this week is, is going to be a, is a challenge just because this is a place where you can get lax. And as athletes, sometimes we do. And that's when it's like, damn, we should have won that game. And we let that one slip. So I, I think this, this week's focus that. is going to be big on Trevor Lawrence's big old butt. Let me ask you about that, because they call it looking ahead and not really focusing on the task at hand. That really does occur in professional sports. I know, you know, some people could say it occurred over the weekend with teams like Ohio State and Michigan as they're gearing up to play each other. So even at the collegiate level. So it does occur where maybe you're thinking about that next game and not what's coming up today. Sometimes you do, but I mean, you know, Ohio State at Maryland, I was just, that was a great goal. Oh, that was a great game. I wanted to text you when they scored. I'm like, Ohio State's about to do something. Don't do then, it. Uh, they came right back down in the minute and scored. Maryland did. Exactly. exactly. So I just like, just, I didn't do it, but it was a good game. But it's, it's a road game in the conference. It's a tough – again, Ohio State's supposed to win by a lot, but you're playing a tough team too with a good quarterback, well coached. So, you know, it was a tough game. They pulled it out, but next week it's going to be insane. Ohio yes. State, Michigan. That's the game right there. That's the game of the year. Were you ever right caught I mean, looking a, ahead as not a baseball player? It's not the national championship, but it's a national championship. Were you ever 100%. caught looking ahead oh, as a ball player? 
100%. Yeah, you'd be like, okay, look, we got this schedule. We got, you know, when the Astros weren't good back in the day, when the Royals weren't good, you'd be like, okay, we got them coming in. All right, or we're going to them. Let's go and let's go sweep them. And then we easily lost to lose two out of three. Pick win on the last day just to salvage the series. Uh, when Cleveland wasn't good, or just when teams weren't good and we were a little bit better, we would definitely do that. And I think teams did it to us also. Where And they probably do it to the Royals now. We're like, Oh yeah, we can, especially this year. Like, oh, we can go into Baltimore game and sweep them real quick, and then they come and whoop you two out of three. And it, that's just human nature, I guess. In a way, is you always think uh, ahead and just in, in, in just intuition. But you know, it, it sucks, especially when you look back at the season. Be like, damn, those W's were very, very big and vital. I wish I had those back because there's always like three or four games that you wish you had back that you can't. But you know, that's why, you know, when guys, you see guys with that laser focus, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty special because as an athlete, it's easy to lose. All right. We're not going to look ahead except to tell you that this segment was brought to you by Be More Around Town. And they're looking ahead to their all-inclusive tailgates, the Steelers, <laughs> the Browns, the Bengals, those road trips, still some space wherever you are. You'll be joined literally by thousands of other Ravens fans on the road or at home, whether it be in Jacksonville, again, Cleveland, Cincinnati, or here against Denver, head to BeMoreAroundTown.com. Be More Around Town, the home of tailgates, of course. Be more, be more around town.com and see it all for yourself. We continue here on the Adam Jones Podcast. One of my favorite portions is Adam's Weekly Rant. It's time for Adam to come out of his shell. It's called Heckle D's. It's brought to you by Jack Daniels and Adam I understand you want to rant about the World Cup and a decision that was made very much at the last second. Yes, sir, I do. Look at this right here. My wife already gave me a little hell because I had a little sit. Not today, but last night. <laughs> uh, that won't be served at the World Cup. No alcohol whatsoever in the games, unless I believe if you sit inside this certain luxury high-end area, which kind of is sucks because you're going to have two million of the world's people traveling to Qatar. Qatar, I don't know how to exactly say it correctly. You're going to be traveling there that are trying to go to these games and are trying to have a little bit of a taste and enjoy the whole entire scenery. And I get it. And I'll go into a lot of games in Europe. Some stadiums have alcohol. Some don't. I get it because they get fight. They fight. They get rowdy. I think in this instance, when it's the whole world and it's a, it's a, it's a country where I don't believe anybody wants to go to jail, I think people might be a tad. There's a tad because I don't really trust people. A tad bit more civilized but just a few drinks and even like mark it off to where you get two or three and max it out or something like that. But to not have alcohol at the world, at the world cup when people are traveling halfway across the world and just want to see their sports teams and, and live and, and just enjoy it. I think that's kind of Bush league. But again, I'm not making the rules. I'm going to be there next week and I'm going to be dry as hell, mad as hell, but I'm going to hopefully watch the U S whoop England's tail. Well, we did get a lecture from the head of FIFA about how you can't go three hours without having a drink and the hypocrisy. And we'll talk about it a little later in the podcast. But this guy's going to have all the alcohol he wants inside his tent, along with the wealthy folks there at the stadium. It's just for the plebeians, the people in the seating ball, which is absurd. We're brought to you by Jack Daniels, which you have to be a member <laughs> of FIFA the or very rich to get, apparently, the get in the stadium. Want. Jack Daniels has always made whiskey, and if they have it their way, they always will. But there's one thing Jack can't make more of. Those are moments. Those are on us to create. And make sure you're making the most of every moment we have. Make it count with Jack Daniels, and please drink responsibly. All right, let's travel beyond Baltimore this week. We'll focus on one of my favorite holidays. It is Thanksgiving week, and Adam, Thanksgiving time in Baltimore is a lot different than Thanksgiving in, I don't know, Turkey. I mean, they're... <laughs> that may have been one of them, but you're celebrating Turkey Day in Turkey where I guess they don't care about Turkey. Right. Yeah, I'm, uh, we were just world travelers now, and uh, you know, Barcelona, Europe doesn't obviously celebrate uh, Thanksgiving the way Americans do. Um, so a few of us are, you know, going to get together and just have dinner. This is basically a Friendsgiving or just a, you know, just a dinner. Um, it's different. Obviously, this, you know, with the decorations aren't out there. Have Christmas decorations already up in Europe, so it's already not even a real Thanksgiving-ish meal. My mom's not here, so I don't have that, you know, just flying her out, missing all that kind of stuff. Not Both of us. Family. Both of us deal with that. Yeah. So much. So, you know, it's a little, it's a, it's a little different this year. So, um, you know, when I watch everybody's plates. When they got all them, you know, they feeding themselves this year. I hope that they got a lot of dishes because we don't. 
I'm glad you mentioned the mother aspect because we both have lost our respective mothers and it's just not the same at Thanksgiving anymore without them, to be honest. It is all about family. Uh, the one rule we have is no political talk. Hopefully that holds up this year because we want to keep the family intact. But that's the only rule. And I'm just thankful that, you know, I'm able to be with family just like you, whether it be in another part of the world. But we all miss our moms. They're a big, big part of Thanksgiving and it being such an important holiday. For me, it's my favorite holiday outside of the 4th of July. So I just like the 4th of July because it's in the middle of summer. But Thanksgiving is an awesome week. And I hope everyone gets a chance to enjoy that turkey, that bad football by the Lions, and a good nap as well. Now, we mentioned earlier about you being at the World Cup. Uh, you're going to Qatar or Qatar, whatever they decide to call it. Uh, I'm going with Qatar. Yeah. I guess you can't wait to be a part of that with or without the alcohol. That's going to be a pretty awesome trip. Um, it's going to be amazing. And it's one of those things that you have to go to if you're near it. You know, it's one of the things in the world that – it's just one of those events and I'm here, I'm on this side of the world and, you know, Qatar from Baltimore, I mean, from Barcelona is what's, I think a six hour flight, you know, that's San Diego to New York. So um, knock that out and go, go spend a couple of days watching, you know, I'm trying to go USA, England, and I'm trying to go Argentina, Mexico, because it might be Lassie's last one, Messi's last one. So um, just go over and have a great experience. I know the next one is in uh, the United States, I believe. North America. So uh, hopefully, you know, I'm able to see that one also, but this one is, is it's near. And if I was in the United States, I wouldn't have traveled all the way over here, but since I'm, you know, three quarters of the way, it makes total sense to just pop over and uh, try to catch some games and see. Winter history. time in Qatar. There's nothing like it. It'll still be 80 degrees. You enjoy it. A reminder, if you guys are enjoying this podcast as much as we are doing it, make sure to check out the Baltimore banner covering the Ravens, the Terps, the Orioles, the entire Baltimore region as a special thanks to our listeners. The banner is offering six months of unlimited digital access for just $1. Head to thebaltimorebanner.com slash AJ to begin. I know a lot of people have taken advantage of that. Again, thebaltimorebanner.com slash AJ. Six months of the banner for just a dollar. All right, it is time now to salute the Baltimore Banner's varsity sports Network Athlete of the Week. We do it every week here on the Adam Jones Podcast. And this week we salute Carson Pettibone. Pettibone made the tough decision to transfer to Gonzaga College in D.C. to St. Mary's in Annapolis for his senior year last summer. And it paid off Friday. That decision helped him and the Saints to a 21-13 victory over Concordia Prep in the MIAAB Conference Football Championship game. That was at Navy Marine Corps Stadium over in Annapolis, Pettibone, the Saints quarterback, Adam, scored all three of St. Mary's TDs in the victory on runs of two, 25, and one yards. Also had a big 32-yard scamper to help set up the game-clinching score in the fourth quarter with Pettibone leading the way. St. Mary's finished 12-0 for the first unbeaten season since the Saints were 9-0-1, and that was back, well, I was very young in 1968, well before – you were born. So congratulations to Carson Pettibone, our varsity sports athlete of the week from the Baltimore Banner. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. Well, it's time for our final segment. It's called Socially Speaking Every Week here on the Adam Jones Podcast. We answer a tweet, a post on Facebook, a post on Instagram, or an email. And you can reach us via email at adamjonespod at gmail.com. That's at adamjonespod or adamjonespod at gmail.com. Pretty simple. And uh, we're going to select an email from one of our lucky listeners, and they will be eligible for a piece of signed memorabilia from Adam Jones. Also on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, we have a new intern, Jackson. Welcome aboard. We're not going to show you yet until you do something, but at Adam Jones pod is where you want to reach us folks on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Adam Jones pod. So this is a doozy. Frank Lee on Twitter, Frank underscore Lee. I hate those underscores. Anyway, he writes, Hey, you guys, I've always heard that broadcasters on TV aren't wearing pants during the broadcast. Can you guys prove that you have pants on? <laughs> that's a bizarre that's a rather that's a creepy question i don't know guys uh, hey, anyone ask for ready to i got my pjs on guys i don't I'm know i'm not gonna stand up 
Anybody? Uh, I'm in just regular old, you know, comfortable <laughs> pants. All right, I'll have to stand up. Comfort. Um. <laughs> oh, oh no! Whoa, whoa, whoa! We I didn't need all that. Ugh. Is that too much? <laughs> yeah, you might even have to. I'll bring them up to my stomach here. We didn't need all that, Gerald. For, that's TMI, as they say. Yeah, TMI. We didn't need all that, Gerald. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but I do want to know what the heck uh, our senior executive producer, Chip Franklin, is doing behind the scenes. We want to thank him and the emphasis on senior for Chip. Great job by him. Also, thanks to our sponsors. We're brought to you by our friends at Jack Daniels. There's lots of ways to make whiskey. There's only one way to make Jack Daniels. Make it count. Jack Daniels, please drink responsibly, just like Mr. Jones. Also by our good friends, Brian and company over at Bmore Around Town. They have the ultimate all-inclusive pregame purple tailgate <laughs> experience. It's before every home and away game. Head to BeMoreRoundTown.com. There's still space left for the trips to Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. Also by the good folks over at the Wyman Group. Much gratitude for their support. By G Leaf Medical Cannabis. Head to GLeaf.com. Medical Cannabis for qualified Maryland patients only. And a reminder, if you're enjoying the podcast, Head out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner, which is covering all of Baltimore sports and news at thebaltimorebanner.com. But check out the special at thebaltimorebanner.com slash AJ to get six months unlimited digital access for just a dollar. Again, thebaltimorebanner.com slash AJ. Adam, you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Again, thanks to everyone for watching. Go out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner and subscribe to this podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, or the Baltimore Banner.com. All right, time for some turkey. Enjoy your holiday and be safe.